Hello YouTube, today we're going to be talking a little bit about game theory. Um, this could be a little intro, kind of, and go over a few examples. Uh, pretty much game theory, you have your players, you have a set of rules, and there are consequences to those rules, and then you analyze the payoffs, or trade-offs in economics terms, uh, to see uh, what your benefit is in choosing a strategy. Now you can think of a basic game such as rock, paper, scissors. There are two players, uh, th pretty much three rules, or well, there are a few. More than that, but the general rules is you can choose between rock, paper, or scissors, and each uh, thing you obviously know how to play rock, paper, scissors beats another, um, and there are consequences to losing. Uh, and then it's a strategy to see uh, based off of the, how you can play the game. So pretty much what is game theory? It's pretty much the study of strategically interdependent behavior, and that just affects kind of on like the outcomes and what determines the effects of outcomes, um, things like that. Okay, so we're going to jump into an example here. So this is a very popular uh, game theory example. It's called the prisoner's dilemma. Notice how the apostrophe is after the S, so this means two prisoners. Um, so there, what happens when you get caught? Um, the two, these, these two guys, or these two people, I should say, guy and buddy, making them generic. <laughs> um, there's a reference here you might know. Anyway, um, so if these two prisoners were caught for a petty crime, what happens when two people are caught for a crime? What do the officers immediately do? They separate them. So they can't communicate. There's no figuring out. They try to determine the truth and who, and like sort out the lies and what's the truth from each story. Um, so they're each told that, so Guy and Buddy are each told that they're suspect, suspected of committing a more serious crime. So what would they want to do? Well, well, there are two options. Guy could confess or Guy could deny, and Buddy could confess and Buddy could deny. Now, the numbers in this box here, or this payoff matrix, represents the number of years in prison. So Guy, if he confesses, and Buddy also confesses, he would get three years of prison, and Buddy would get three years of prison. If Buddy confesses and Guy denies, then, Bud then Buddy gets one year of prison, and Guy gets ten years of prison. Now, if Buddy denies, that means he would get, and the Guy confesses, Buddy gets ten years of prison, and Guy gets one, and then if they both deny it, then they each get two. Now, the thing is, they don't know these outcomes. They don't know what each person is going to do. So if you think about this just normally, mathematically, kind of thinking, what's the optimal, or what's the best scenario for each person? Well, they both would get the least amount of options here. For both of them to succeed, they each get two years of prison, they both deny it, they might, they'll go through the trial, they won't, you're innocent until proven guilty kind of idea. Call it a day, two years for both, that sounds fair. Um, so that would be the optimal, but this doesn't happen though. In real life, this doesn't happen because why? Individuals tend to be more selfish and are more looking towards their own interests, own personal interests. So the optimal for each individual here, so for Buddy, he would want to confess and hope that Guy denies. And Guy hopes that Buddy confesses or denies so that if he confesses, he's okay. But you don't know what your other partner is going to do or your friend or whoever is with you. So how do you solve the game? You pretty much, each player has to make a rational choice in pursuit of his own best interest given any action taken by the other player. So this outcome... This overall outcome, which we'll figure out in a second, is called the Nash Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Okay, so let's think about this. Given, given these scenarios, uh, so let's create a scenario here. Say Buddy denies. If Buddy denies, then Guy's going to want to confess because he will spend the least amount of years in prison. So he, if, if Buddy denies, so we're looking just at this column, which was the smallest number because this is years in prison, so you want a smaller number, um, then it would be 1 versus 2, so then 1 is your option here. Now what if, let's say, um, Buddy confesses? What would you want to do? What would Guy do? Guy, you either have 3 years or 10 years, so you'd obviously want to confess as well. So, what if 
guy denies and we're buddy now so we're buddy and guy denies you're gonna want one year in prison instead of two so now we kinda of have to look at it here what would be so we're gonna to have to be looking at the rational choice with the best interest kinda of thing best interest for the two of them so if you think about it if they both deny it's it's optimal, right? But they don't know that. There's that thing. What if they if the other person confesses, um, then they are at risk of jeopardizing who one of them is going to get ten years of prison. So what happens is the tendency is that they actually go towards this section here, and they both confess because it's optimal, not optimal, but it's the rational. It's the best option for the rational choice for their own best interest. Um, and this is this Nash equilibrium here um, that we have reached. So if they both confess, they have the better outcome um, because there is always that risk of getting 10 years of prison as well. And they don't know if they can deny if they get pressured by the police or whoever, even if they are innocent or guilty. Um, so that you generally tend to do is to confess. So now let's look at this other example. Let's go do a more um, business-based example rather than prison. So this is simply uh, Sears, the company, and Walmart, the company, and they're making decisions on whether or not to lower or not lower their prices. So Walmart's in blue, Sears is in green. So if Walmart lowers their prices, then uh, Sears, if they lower their prices, they get five million, or if they don't lower their prices, they, they uh, only make one million. So that means Walmart would make a buttload if they lower their prices and Sears doesn't. So, same thing, if Sears lowers their prices and Walmart doesn't, that means Walmart or Sears will make a lot of money. So, he's kind of analyzing the matrix here to see if you guys can get it. So, now here's what you want to do to kind of approach the problem. You just take it one step at a time. So, if Sears doesn't lower their price, if they don't lower their price, what will Walmart want to do? They want to make more money. So, they'll make 30 million so they'll choose to lower their prices now what if um, what if Walmart lowers their prices that means Sears is going to want to lower their price as well what if Walmart doesn't lower their price or they don't lower their price then Sears will want to um, lower their price as well, lower their price so they can make a lot of money. So this is optimal for each individual but not for both of them. So Sears or Walmart will make a lot of money if one of them chooses the opposite option. Now the optimal for the total would be here. If they both don't lower their prices they'll still be making a lot of money. But what happens is they don't, they have, since the other person doesn't know or the other company doesn't know what the other company is going to do, what they choose to do instead is to lower their prices each um, so they pretty much because it's they can make the most profit for both of them um, based off of losing not or the risk of losing a lot of money versus having some money that's kind of the thought there uh, so that's pretty much an example so the equilibrium price or the Nash equilibrium will eventually be at five million dollars for each or their, how much money they make. So I hope that helped with an introduction to game theory. There are a lot of cool applications and examples, kind of thinking problems to make you work out. You can conduct these kind of matrix matrices. There's even uh, three by twos and larger. I was going to do one, but for the sake of time, I'll just call it a day. But hope this helped with an introduction to game theory, and feel free to explore online to see if you can find a cool problem of your own.